Well, right now, what we're trying to do here at the Hornados really is define a breed of cattle that are efficient and sustainable in arid regions. We're evaluating strategies for sustainable cattle production from western rangelands. And so we're looking, of course, focusing on these harsh, challenging desert environments. And we're looking at effects on rangelands and the capacity to produce cattle that in a profitable way with a smaller environmental impact, but then all the way up through the supply chain. If we see these animals, we see them from the very tip of, of South America, down in Tierra del Fuego, all the way up into Canada. And so we see that these animals for 500 years have been here, that they have adapted to all these different environments. So what better animals could we be looking for? The criollo is a, uh, is a very efficient cow on the land, and that's, we see that in every you know, up north in South Dakota where it's snowy and cold. They're a super efficient grazer and converter of grass and other forages into, into meat. And also down in the Southwest where drought is an issue, they're a super drought efficient animal as well. So they're, they're really multi-talented, if you will, in the ecosystem. And that's one of the reasons that we really like the breed. The, the research that's being done at the Hornada is pretty integral to our our production of these animals. My name's Rob Pollan. I work for a cattle ranch in Southern California in the mountains, east of a large metropolitan area. And it is pretty much all chaparral woodlands. The reason we have started to switch over to criollos because they appear so far to be much more adapted to the fragile nature of, of, of our high desert country. GPS is on uh, both the Criollo cattle and uh, Angus Cosper, mm -hmm. and so that we can do comparisons on them, see how they use the landscape. And so we have vegetative maps that we can refer to, and we can pinpoint the areas that they're using. And we can also, with the GPS, know if uh, they're grazing or if they're drinking water. We have multiple places mapped with ecological states, so we're actually able to tell their use in terms of states, which we can then link to state and transition models and think about change over time. We are working in semi-arid areas and in desert areas. And I think that, that it's important because 60% of the land mass, the earth land mass is desert. And so we're not only influencing here in our areas, but we're also influencing internationally. And so we're trying to get involved internationally because of that reason and working with the same type of cattle. And uh, I think that this is uh, part of this whole story of climate change and adapting to climate change with these animals.